We're going to do a midseason check-in. And I guess the first question to ask is, is Caleb Williams tanking to avoid the team's tanking for Caleb Williams? No, I don't <laughs> Not on, not on purpose, but maybe, I don't know, maybe he is. Uh, look, I think that Caleb is, man, a lot different than what he was last year. And I'm I'm not going to sit here and say that he's still not a special quarterback. The ceiling that Caleb Williams brings is still as high as it has ever been. The 2022 tape still exists. But holy cow, it's looked a lot different in 2023 especially under pressure he was pff's number one graded quarterback in college football under pressure last year had a 79.5 passing grade under pressure which is nuts and a near 80 pff passing grade under pressure it's insane this year it's all the way down into like the low 30s like we're not even close it's not a step back it is a major step back for him this year the area that worries me the most with him though because like play under pressure can be a little bit up and down um and you can kind of say hey you know he's just he, he took a couple too many risks here that's why the grades as low as it is the part that gets me the most with Caleb Williams is the time to throw numbers or last two years Caleb Williams in 2022 had a time to throw of 3.44 seconds this year he has a time to throw 3.21 if you go back all the way to the 2018 NFL draft, that is by far the highest time to throw of any of the quarterbacks that were selected, certainly in the first round, like total, not just number one, not just top five, like any of the guys who went in the first round. The only players, if you include guys in this class who are relatively close, is J.J. McCarthy from Michigan. But J.J. is right around three seconds flat. So he's kind of flirted with, you know, the high twos, the low threes, and he's right around three seconds flat, which is still nowhere close to 3.44 and 3.21. Like, that's that's still a big distance. Trevor Lawrence, Joe Burrow, Zach Wilson, um, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, all of these guys had time to throw numbers below three seconds. And Caleb Williams in his two most productive seasons, time to throw is through the roof. Nobody in the NFL holds on to the ball that long. The only three quarterbacks, and I checked this last week, so it might be a little bit different. The only three quarterbacks who have a higher time to throw than three seconds this year were Russell Wilson, Josh Allen. Now I can't even remember the third. Might be Gardner Minshew. Can't remember who the third was. But there's only three, and they, they were playing some pretty terrible ball at the time. It's probably Fields, right? Fields was the, it might be Justin Fields, the only guy last year that had a time to throw. The only player, the only starting quarterback who had a time to throw above three seconds last year was Justin Fields. Right. And we saw how bad that was. You can't live in that world, plain and simple. So whether you want to say, hey, the pressure play, you know, it's up and down, he'll be fine, whatever, he can't hold on to the ball that long. He won't survive in the NFL level. That's, 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 Nobody does that. Mahomes doesn't do that. For people that think that Mahomes just runs around back there and does whatever he wants, Mahomes doesn't do that. Mahomes is in like the 2-7, something like that. That's what worries me the most about Caleb Williams, is that we are now two years in a row, him being to the moon high on the rankings when it comes to those time-to-throw numbers. That part of his process, how he sees the field, and how long he thinks he can hold on to the ball is going to be the toughest challenge for him when he gets to the next level. And unfortunately, that is a make-or-break trade. And if he can figure it out, obviously the ceiling remains franchise-changing high. But if he doesn't, man, your play, play suffers, and I think that you're seeing that this year with him. Yeah, he also has the slowest average time to throw of all the kind of big guys that we've talked about Um just on first read type looks, right? Like, so forget the crazy scrambling, scramble drill, uh, you know, late in the down, ad-libbing, all, forget all that stuff. Like, just first mm -hmm. look plays, his is the slowest of any of these guys. That, I think, is maybe a more concerning sort of trait than the overall number, but points to the same thing. Um, when I was looking at, like, the turnover-worthy plays he's had over the last few weeks, it it's like, it's like a, 
uh, a kind of reel of why they teach quarterbacks not to play like that, right? Like all the stuff Mahomes does, it's all the plays Mahomes never makes, and you're wondering how he gets away with it. Like when he does all this, like rolling to the left, finding a guy, firing it, sidearm, back across his body, you're like, no, nobody ever does that because there's always a player lurking somewhere that you're not looking at who can just jump back across into the lane and pick it off. And with mm -hmm. Mahomes, it never, it never manifests. That guy's never there, basically. And with <laughs> right. Caleb Williams, for a long time, that guy had never been there. But right. all of these throws are like that, where he's rolling, he's running somewhere to the sideline, tries to fit it into a guy who's either coming across with him or working back in the other direction. And there's just like a defender standing there on the sideline who just takes like two steps to his right and picks it off or, you know, beats the receiver to the spot. And you're like, yeah, it, it feels inevitable that these plays were, were going to get made. And yet they hadn't been for, you know, the majority of his career so far. I don't know if he's just been unlucky and thrown a bunch of those passes that were like too far or if he'd been spectacularly lucky for so long and hadn't because this is where you get the Mahomes comparisons, right? Brett Favre used to do those things as well, and they were almost always the bad part of Brett Favre's game. It's like, eh, mm -hmm. Brett, too far, can't do that, you know, come on. Mahomes has been the only guy, really, that's been able to consistently do that and almost never been punished for it. Like, he breaks the rules of what happens when it comes to defenders and where you can put the ball. And right. one of the reasons that Caleb Williams was getting compared to Mahomes is because the same thing was true. He was doing these crazy things, doing this like taking all of his play from the book of how not to play quarterback and was getting away with it. And for the first time, he started not getting away with it. As of right now, I, I, I'm trying not to be super hyperbolic about it, but as of right now, I mean, you're right. He, he, it's, it's really hard to look at how Caleb Williams has played and the results of how he has played this year and not look at last year and say to yourself, you just got incredibly lucky. I mean, for for him to be for, for him to be holding on to the ball as long as he did last year, and some of his great throw, like some of his greatest plays, are plays where you go, "How was he not sacked? Right? Like, how did he just get out of that?" And at the NFL level, those probably are sacks. So then, the tough part with Williams is he's got a great arm. Yeah. He's got great velocity. Then you push the ball down the field. I think he fired off very quickly. He's got that compact release. I like his base, certainly when he's not, you know, trying to do this sidearm Derek Jeter type of throw, which we've seen him do a lot. But when he is fundamentally sound, like this is a good quarterback. This is a high ball placement kind of a player. He's got all the arm talent in the world, but his nickname is literally Superman. Like that's what they have <laughs> called him. That is his nickname. And that is how he plays. It's how he plays in that Lincoln Riley offense. You loved it last year because he had more confidence than anybody in college football. It's why he won the Heisman Trophy. But now, with things not going as well as they were last year, it's hard not to look at this play style and go, okay, the Superman stuff, when the situation calls for you to be Superman, is different then you just thinking you always need to pull off a Superman-like play. And the way that this season has gone for Caleb Williams is a lot more of the latter than the former. You think you need to be Superman every single play. That's when quarterbacks get in trouble. The ones who have his kind of creative ability, yet last a long time in the league, are the ones who have the Superman ability, but don't put on the cape unless the situation calls for it. And then when it does, they're able to do something spectacular. You start to wear the cape all the time. That's when it's tough. I mean, we're, we're seeing that like, we're seeing that stuff with Josh Allen, right? Yeah. I think everybody likes to point to Patrick Mahomes just because that's, that's always the, people always just want to go to the very top and they think about Patrick Mahomes. But in all honesty, like Josh Allen right now is a better comparison. These are players who, if they don't, have a bunch of turnover worthy plays if they protect the football if they don't go full superman when they don't have to you got enough arm talent to beat anybody you're, you're one of the highest ceiling quarterbacks in the nfl but as we've seen with josh allen last year he leads the league in turnover worthy plays 
this year, Josh Allen, uh, some of the losses that they have had have been on his shoulders because he has given the ball away. So that to me is the, is the better comp. The Mahomes stuff, Mahomes is like you said, it, it's, it's, it's it's like in uh, you watch Deadpool two. You ever seen the movie Deadpool two? When um, the, he's like he's recruiting those superheroes, and the one girl comes up to him, and she's like, "Oh, what's your superpower?" And she's like, "Oh, I'm lucky." And he's like, "That's not a superpower." And she's like, "Oh yeah, it is." And like after their mission, her and Deadpool are like the only ones who are still alive because everyone else died, and she was just the luckiest person that was on the team. I'm not gonna. Everybody likes to. When they hear the word luck, it's kind of like a trigger word. Like they think we're discounting their talent. We're not. Mahomes is just lucky in a lot of those ways. Yeah, I mean, and and I, Williams just says Williams just says. Yeah, I, I think it's you're right. It, it's it. This is sort of describing a style of play, right? And there is a spectrum of outcomes of that style of play that can range all the way from Patrick Mahomes, which I think is probably the 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 best outcome of that style I can't think of anybody that's consistently done it better than that ever um, you know then you go through Brett Favre who as much as Brett Favre is sort of thrown up as a cautionary tale of this type of play I mean Brett Favre's a Hall of Famer right it worked for Brett Favre for a long period of time and even though it's the reason the Vikings didn't make the Super Bowl in 09. It's the reason the Packers didn't make the Super Bowl in 05, whenever that was. Uh, like, it cost them championship runs. It also got him to the Hall of Fame and got a bunch of teams to the playoffs. And, like, it worked, right? More right. than it didn't work. Uh, Josh Allen is also on that spectrum. Then you go further down and, like, Jameis Winston is on that spectrum, right? And now you're getting into the sort of more, uh-oh, this is – maybe more hassle than it's worth territory. And if you swing all the way down to the other end of the spectrum, like John Skelton is probably on that spectrum of like wildly catastrophic, ridiculous confidence in his own ability, only almost none of the good, right? Like <laughs> a few big plays here and there, like great arm. Oh, wow, the, the, there's some potential here, but like way more bad than good. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, these are all like players on the same spectrum in terms of style, of like highly volatile, outside of structure, doing some crazy things. And it, the question is like, how, what is the distribution of that? And for Mahomes, it's like amazing good all the time and almost no negative. And for John Skelton, it's like the exact opposite. Williams is on that spectrum. Now the question is where in that, that range is he? And I right. think he clearly trends towards the good end. Like for as much as we're saying, like, this is a problem, he still made a bunch of insane plays. I'm looking at one of his turnover-worthy plays that came against Arizona State, which is, like, I, you watch it initially from either the TV view or the sideline, like the big all-22, and you're like, that's just a ridiculously terrible play. And then you watch it from the end zone, and it's like, it's actually a wildly good throw if there wasn't a defender standing on the sideline waiting for him to do it. Like, he's, <laughs> he's running to the left, and exactly like go ahead go ahead go ahead he's go ahead. running to the left like exactly like mahomes is able to somehow throw with velocity and accuracy and touch while sprinting in the exact wrong direction to make that happen when he lets go of the ball he's literally in the jordan logo pose like legs splayed arm up here like it's perfect Jordan logo and he he layers it over a linebacker and in front of the DB right to his receiver except on, on the sideline that he's never looked at heading towards is a DB who just takes like two steps to his right and picks it off and it's like that's one of the dumbest throws I've ever seen anybody make but it, it just the, the sort of the fine margins of like had he seen that guy that's a throw that maybe him Mahomes and I don't know if anybody else can make that throw and yet, it was terrible because he just didn't see the dude waiting for it.